This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today's call, the complaint is, is that they've got water leaking on top of the restrooms and it's dripping and causing mold in the ceiling to rot out. And what it is, I believe, is see that line set over there. That's the walk-in freezer. We're gonna get crawling over there and see what's going on, but we've got some ice built up, look like some compromised insulation. Crawling up here, it looks like I got a friend up here with me too. All right, so we're trying to climb over. It's a tight little attic. It's not horrible though. So we'll get over there and we'll get a look at that line set. All right, so the insulation has definitely failed on this and you can see that it's been leaking on the roof, causing all kinds of issues. It's kind of a tight fit back in here and it's hard for you guys to see it, but there's actually a walk-in cooler over there too, a line set. It's running far over there somewhere. Oh yeah, it's running way over. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, this thing's gonna be almost impossible to re-insulate. And we're probably gonna be better off just uh, just um, replacing the line set, it's probably gonna be easier. So, and another thing too, is this is the outside of the building. The walk-in is on the outside of the building. So this is running down the wall and then coming out the wall. So like getting a new line set down that hole is gonna be impossible. I think the best bet's gonna be running this exposed on the roof. So we're just kind of getting started on repiping this line set and uh, getting it out of the attic where it's all messed up. So just kind of roughing it out real quick to get an idea of what I'm gonna do. We'll try to straighten out the lines. I didn't plan on this little roof pitch thing they got going on here. So I might have to use a 45 there, we'll see. And then we're gonna end up uh, using one of their roof drains customer doesn't want to go over the side of the wall just for aesthetics they don't want people to see it so as I'm mocking everything up I'm going through and deburring it cleaning it sanding it so that way it's one less thing I got to do after again just trying to save myself some headaches and I'm sure I'm gonna have to cut things short but I'm just you know doing this and trying to help myself so I'm waiting for some fittings to make that final 45 or whatever I'm gonna have to do there so just going through it slowly just trying to get everything ready to hope so I don't know if this is gonna work but I hope that I only have to run one line of blocks and I can put two line sets. Both the line sets are gonna be 7 8 3 8 uh, according to the manufacturer's recommendations for proper oil return and refrigerant velocity. So um, I'm hoping I can get, it's gonna be tight, get two 7 8 and I've got the, um, the Kusha Therm clamps. So I'll show you guys those in a few minutes for the Unistrut clamps. So it's it's got a big old fat piece of insulation on it. So that way we got seamless insulation. So I don't always get to do this, but when I can, you know, trying to follow best practices, I've got nitrogen purging through it. I'm using my, uh, it's a Western Enterprises VN500 regulator and it has a braze feature. It's really nice, I like it. And then I have a little step braze chingus that you can put in different sizes. So we're just getting ready to hit this up open on the other side we're gonna braise these up then we'll fit them and make them all pretty and everything so and then I know for a fact that my torch is dirty the last time I used it so oftentimes what I'll do is turn the oxygen on lay it on a flat surface and just clean the tip real quick with the oxygen on so nothing goes in it do that and then I have a torch tip cleaner I'm gonna run while the oxygen is running An actual torch tip cleaner. It looks very similar to a cap tube gauge, but it's not.
So personally, I like to inspect my welds as I go along because if there's a leak or I don't like the look of it, I'd rather heat it up while it's still hot instead of doing it later. So I just give it a quick look with the mirror, make sure it looks good, make sure we got a nice good cap on the fitting. Also being careful, see I'm wearing a headscarf. You don't want to be letting this fall down when you're brazing, catch on fire and you have a problem. Okay, looking good. We're gonna hit the next one real quick. I gotta move over the nitrogen. All right, same thing. We're gonna braze this one up. Nitrogen's flowing through. Sure, I'm gonna get the question. I braze with a number two tip. It's a little hot, but I like flowing a lot of heat. to let it naturally cool but um, I'm, you know I'll let it cool for a minute and then probably end up having to use a towel so I can get moving again before I cool it I'm gonna inspect the weld or braze joint whatever you want to call it looks good looks like we got a nice even cap on the fitting end and it looks like it flowed in so it's cooled quite a bit now but I'm gonna go ahead and cool it a little bit more now granted you're not supposed to cool lines because uh, Nobody's perfect. What I'm looking for in a braze joint is that quarter inch that the solder and the heat went quarter inch in, quarter inch out. Nice, good, solid cap right there. You see that? That's what I'm looking for. It's not overheated in my opinion. Some may say it is, but it's not overheated, but it's got enough heat that the solder flowed all the way around. Excuse me, I'm kind of out of breath, but this is all we're gonna get done today. Um, I got the suction lines ran you know mocked up and ran brazed I went ahead and uh, put the rubber caps in the end and just left the insulation dangling because we still have some more to do but we're gonna come back and then we'll pump down the walk-in cooler pump down the walk-in freezer and make final connections but I didn't run the liquid lines yet either so I'm running out of daylight today so we'll do the liquid lines when I come back and then I'm not even gonna secure anything yet because there's not gonna be anybody up here we'll secure the suction line but you see we got it right here I'm not perfect, my lines aren't exactly straight, I'm not a great installer, but there. And then I ran it down, down there, and then all the way over, and then we'll come over. This is their walk-in freezer right here. So again, we're coming there, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cap that'll go over this, and it'll still be open just in case water was to come out. But what I did was I picked the highest, these are secondary roof drains in case the main roof drain doesn't um, I picked the highest one that didn't have any water around it, which is this one. This one has a bunch of water and mud around it, and this one's a drain. 
So, you know, it's not ideal that I'm using the secondary roof drain, but it's better than coming over the side of the building. This way, I only have to make a cap that's, what, four feet? And then I'll just paint it this beige color to somewhat match, so that way, you know, people from the street over here aren't seeing this. And uh, like I said, I just ran them and then put the rubber plugs that come in the lines, I shoved them back in there, so that way no moisture gets in there for now. And then we'll tape everything up and secure it down to the blocks once we do the liquid lines too. These are the plugs that I'm talking about right here. And they come basically in each end of the pipe. Now I can't, uh, I didn't roll with 20 foot sticks hanging off my van, so I had them cut them in 10 foot sections. Because of that, all that I'm gonna do is twist and push, but you gotta ream it first. Twist and push and you'll get it to pop in there. And then that way it'll keep any other moisture besides what's already in there from getting in there while you're you know, letting it sit outside. I kind of made a mistake here and it's okay, I'll remedy it, but I didn't give myself enough room between the two suction lines to put both of the liquid lines. So what that creates, and here's the other thing, I don't have 20 foot sections of pipe. If I had 20 foot sections of pipe, I wouldn't run into this, but I'm gonna have to run the liquid lines on the outside of each of those. Now, this one over here will end up being okay, and I'll explain that right now, but on this one, you see I have a 10 foot section right here, and I wanna do a 45, but I'm too short to make it 45, because if I 45 it, it won't be on the outside anymore, it'll end up coming on the inside right here. So, you see, that's, if I 45'd it, this line would have to come all the way out to here. So, it's an easy remedy, it's not gonna be perfect. Again, I'm not a perfect installer, I just do what I can. I'm gonna take a piece of soft 3 8 because what I could do is put a coupling here, take this, put a 45, and then have a bunch of braze joints. But if I just take a piece of soft 3 8 and swage it, I'll only have two braze joints as if I was using a normal 45. So that's what we're gonna do right here. So I've got my swage kit, my drill, my two feet cutter. And then what we'll do is we'll make it a little bit big because I don't know the exact length that it needs to be. I have some scrap 3 8 in the van. Try to roll it as straight as possible. And then what we'll do is just cut it right about here. And then all that I'm gonna do is just take my tubing bender and lay a 45 on this guy. So we're just gonna go right there. Let's see if that's good enough. Looks like I need to go just a little bit more. Didn't quite hit the 45 mark. There we go, there's my 45, I missed it. All right, and then now, yeah, see that'll work. I ended up grabbing a towel because this is so hot. Cool. Good, good. So now, go like that. Go like that. We can braise it in and we'll do something to support it while we're braising it. Okay. And I'm going to take my mark and I'm actually going to go just on the inside of that mark. My bender has a little chingus right here. We're going to 90 down. Okay, go ahead and pull it back and uh, hook it up for me. Hooked up, okay. So then that works perfect. It puts me right where I need to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this ready to be brazed. And we're gonna get ready to make connections. So this is my walk-in cooler. That's my line set that I ran. We're gonna come down to a P-trap and then go in. And then my walk-in freezer's over here. I already drilled the holes and we're getting cleaned up inside so that way we're going to do the walk-in freezer first because I find that to be the hardest one and I like to do the hard difficult stuff first so so again we're going to put a p-trap basically going up so I'll take a pre well you'll see I'll take a pre-bent piece of copper bend 90 on it go into the coil come out 90 again and then we'll go into the trap and go up so all right I'm hooking up the smart probes that way I could do evacuation and not have to use my manifold set. 
Um, we'll be able to evacuate the liquid line through that guy. Actually, we'll probably just pull through the suction line because we're just going to be... Well, no, we'll have to do this too. So, But anyways, it, it'll all make sense when I get ready to do it. But uh, we're going to go ahead and pump it down at the receiver. But we got to remember that these receivers, when they have the packing nut, if they do, you want to loosen it before you actuate the valve. Okay, so just kind of get right up on there. Sometimes they don't have them. Sometimes they do. This one does. So we're just going to loosen it right here. There you go. That's all you got to do. And it just prolongs the life of the valve. So then now we're going to go ahead and front seat this guy. Notice that we've got pressure on the high side now because we front seated the valve. And we're going to front seat it all the way. Okay, notice that we get a little bit of a leak. That's because I loosened the packing. It kind of hissing at me a little bit right now. Just because it's loosened, we'll just tighten it up and it'll stop leaking. There you go. See, it stopped leaking. So that happens. We're still going to have pressure. We're going to go ahead and open this guy up. And we got pressure on the low side. So now we're going to turn the condensing unit on. And it should pump down. Once it pumps down, we'll let the vapor out of the low side and then we'll be open to atmosphere and get ready to change over the line set and do the connections. We'll still have all the refrigerant stored in the receiver. Pull the vacuum on the unit and uh, started it back up and went ahead and pumped down the receiver, checked the liquid level. Uh, it was a little bit low. Uh, we had left it on install. Um, yeah, we had, well, we had left it at the three quarter mark and I wanna say it was right about here is where it was right now. So went ahead and filled it up with about a pound and a half. Um, I think that's what it was. I'll measure my tank here in just a sec, but I'm assuming it was about a pound. Um, and yeah, that's it. Things running. We're gonna go ahead and open it back up. We still got some little bit of cleanup here and there to do. So. Yeah, we're gonna let it run for a little bit while we're cleaning up, but yeah, freezer's done. Now we just gotta hook up the cooler. What I'm doing, we haven't done any work on top of the walk-in, so the lines are still just sitting there. I'm doing a bent piece of copper for the liquid line and for the suction, and I'm gonna go ahead and pump the system down now. One of the really cool things, this will make for a really easy evacuation on this one, is that once I pump it down at the receiver, I'm gonna, I'm gonna front seat the king valve, I'm gonna shut off the flow, the refrigerants are going to all get sucked into the compressor and get stuck on the other side of the discharge reed in the compressor. Then I get to shut down the suction so that way I'm not pulling on the oil because the oil will still have refrigerant trapped in it and a lot of times the oil being contaminated or having refrigerant or other non-condensables in it is what causes the evacuation to take a long time. So once I get it pumped down at the king valve and the system shuts off, I'll be able to go ahead and front seat this uh, suction side service valve right here. And then I'll pull my evacuation through the liquid line port right here. And it'll evacuate everything all the way back up. And the plan is to put my micron gauge on this guy right here. So then I'm just vacuuming down the line set and not having to try to get all the stuff out of the oil, which will make for a really, a much better evacuation. Now, that's being that that king valve doesn't leak, which is often the case. King valves always leak. So when you're pulling a vacuum on a pump down system, it's often very difficult to attain a perfect vacuum. So we'll see if everything goes well and uh, um, this valve doesn't leak, you know, so anyways, but that's where we're at. So we're gonna go ahead and pump it down now. I decided not to cut out the suction filter for a couple reasons, but um, one, I need that port to purge with nitrogen. But we're going to be changing this condensing unit very shortly, so I'm just going to leave it in for now because it's not leaking. Um, the compressor suction valve is actually leaking by too, kind of like I was worried about. Because look at my suction pressure, 58 PSI. And that's right there. And uh, it's just because, um, you know, the reed inside the compressor is probably leaking by or something. So, But anyways. So uh, yeah, we're not gonna cut the suction filter out, but I got the liquid dryer changed. It's nice that it was a flare, so I was able to reuse the same sight glass and just flare in the dryer. We finished up the last couple braze joints. We still got a couple little things to clean up, things to support, but I'm pulling the evacuation right now. So the way I'm pulling the evacuation is through that port right there, liquid line solenoid valve is open and on downstairs. So it's pulling all the way through, coming back up on the suction. So it's a true 
micron reading. But again, I don't expect this to pull down below 500 because I know that these valves over here are leaking refrigerant. So we'll just get it down, uh, you know, low enough to where, as, as low as I can basically, so. All right, we're in the walk-in cooler now. You can see how we just styrofoam that and then that way it foams up, but it'll be all nice and solid when it's done. And it uh, looks like we're still gonna put a strap to hold this line up right here. This is temporary. Like you see how I connected to their existing solenoid valve, that looks like crap, but it's because we're gonna change the coil. Here's their walk-in freezer. This one's already got a new coil and you can see we literally just connected right here and went straight out the wall. So that one's still drying too. Uh, we gotta figure out a way to seal up that hole right there. The old, I think we'll just silicone it. We really can't do a whole lot for that, so. So it is not perfection, but it's functional. Again, I wasn't striving for absolute perfection. There's all kinds of things I could have done. That 3 eighths comes out too far. You know, I mean, it's, I, I can't be perfect. You know, I mean, if you look at it, the 3 eighths line kind of wobbles over here, you know, but as good as it is, the customer doesn't want to pay for anything more than what we gave them, so. We're currently foaming the holes, so we put cardboard on each side and then put the foam on the inside of the cardboard and the cardboard holds it back, so. We're currently doing that on both of them. The P-traps are right there, um, but like I said, we're gonna get a cover for that right there, so that way it's not visible from the street because the line set itself is hidden below this little parapet wall right here but we just wanna get it so it's covered right there and I'll probably paint match it, like, you know, nothing. I'll just get a rattle can brown or something like that and spray on there. To recap, we had a service call on a water leak above the restrooms and we went out there, we found that the water was coming from the insulation, the failed insulation on the refrigeration lines. Um, just to start out, I know I'm gonna get a bunch of comments about the ice coming back to the walk-in freezer. First off, I'm going to say that ice doesn't necessarily mean something bad, even though most of the times it's a pretty good indication of an iced up evaporator coil or some sort of flood back, okay? That is something that we are going to address. I really didn't feel it to be super urgent at the time, but I'm definitely going to go back. That unit has a electronic expansion valve, so it's a very good possibility that we have some bad sensors for the suction line uh, uh, temperature sensor, basically. So yes, we are going to follow up with that, but... Anyways, because I know I'm going to get a bunch of comments about that. But anyways, um, you know, I'm not perfect, all right? The customer doesn't want to pay for perfection either. I try to do the best I can with the, the tools that I have, which, you know, just a little bit of knowledge that I have. So, you know, I'm sure that you guys can nitpick the heck out of that. I can nitpick the heck out of the job, okay? Lines aren't straight, different things like that, okay? I did my best, and again, it's good enough, okay? You know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Nobody does absolutely perfect work, okay? Um, you know, not in a short amount of time for, you know, under a quoted amount of, you know, cost and all that different stuff. Okay. So it is what it is. And, you know, but do me a favor, you know, send me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Okay. If you think I could have done better, you know, tell me, okay. Just, you know, because if there's things I could have done to make it go faster, I'm looking at the job and I already know that there's a couple things that I would have done differently doing it over again, you know, so there's always that stuff, but um, I tried to share a couple different little tips there. Obviously, I didn't show all the brazing, okay? I only showed, I think, you know, a couple couplings or fittings or something like that, and then just kind of showed the rest of the job, what I did and how I did it, okay? I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Um, you know, leave me some feedback. Send me an email. Remember, I do live streams every Monday night. In the show notes of this video, I'm going to link a new YouTube channel that I'm starting. That's going to be where I'm going to be reviewing tools. It's going to be called HVACR Tools. Just look in the show notes. I do not have any videos on the channel yet, but do me a favor. If you guys would, go give it a subscription. So that way, once I do start loading up videos, you guys already know about it. Okay, so I'm, I'm working on things and I plan on uploading a few at a time. So that will be coming soon. But other than that, guys, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Okay.